Tonight's meal is one of those highly complicated meals. Very difficult, many steps, time consuming. That's what tonight's meal is. As you can see, I am holding up a Trader Joe's Hatch Chili Mac and Cheese box. The complication with this is I'm just going to have to open it and put it on this pan. So, that's what tonight's meal is. And not only are we having one box, we're having another one. Let me show you that one. We are having this tilapia, panko breaded tilapia. Um, you know we've been having seafood about once a week. And when I was at Costco, they had this sampled and it was so good. I went straight and picked up a box. I love when they have their samples and you can taste what things are gonna taste like before you buy them. And so I bought this. And so yeah, that's how complicated it is tonight. I'm gonna have to put these pieces of fish on the pan and bake them. Don't you love those kind of meals sometimes? And especially when they're good. This one was really, really good. So that's what we're having tonight. I'll show you our plates when it's all said and done. All right, here's the big bag of fish. You can see the sizes. There's a lot of pieces in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Maybe about 15 pieces in this bag. I can't remember how much I paid for this. Uh, just maybe like 13. I'm really not sure. Um, I can put it on the screen here if I still have my receipt. But they were really, really tasty. So um, I'm going to take these out of the bag and get them on the pan. Okay, I think probably these six pieces are be plenty. If I have anything left over, we can eat it as leftovers tomorrow for lunch. Alright, so the box directions says here for the conventional oven to bake it at 450 for 18 to 22 minutes or until crisp and you turn over about halfway through. All right, here is a look at my plate. I have two pieces of the panko crusted tilapia and some of the fresh's tartar sauce. I just cooked up a can of green beans with some dried minced onion and some chicken base um, flavoring with garlic salt as well. And then these are the Trader Joe's Hatch Chili Mac and Cheese and two deviled eggs. And that's what we're having for tonight. All right, here's what we're having for dinner tonight. James grilled up these beautiful ribeyes. We've had steak pretty often lately. Now that it's grilling weather, we are putting the grill to good work. And for my side, I'm having this Uncle Ben's Ready Rice Roasted Chicken. Um, rice that cooks in the microwave in 90 seconds. So it's easy peasy, plus it was free. I got a coupon in the mail just to get a free package of rice. So that is what we are having for dinner tonight. Well, hello there, friends, and welcome back to another week of What's for Dinner. I am showing you our plate for tonight. We are having hamburger patties and mushroom gravy, mashed potatoes, and green beans. Let me tell you about these hamburger patties and mushroom gravy. That's exactly what they are. You make a hamburger patty just like you would if you're going to make cheeseburgers, say. You just season it up however you'd like. We like a little garlic salt and pepper on ours. We like it pretty simple. You fry those up in your skillet. Once they're no longer pink inside, take them out, drain off all the grease, put them back in the pan, and then you're gonna use one can of cream of mushroom soup, and I like to add in one can of milk. You whisk that together, get all the lumps, pour that back in, and let it simmer together. It gets so delicious and tender. The gravy takes on all the flavor from the beef. Such a simple recipe, very cost effective. Now there's a lot of different recipes out there, say for Salisbury steak, various things that you can add into your meat. This is the way we had it growing up. It was just the hamburger patties, seasoned how you wanted to. You can fry them in some onions if you want. You put the cream of mushroom soup on top. It is so good. Served with mashed potatoes, great. Um, what an easy meal, and it's just kind of one of those comfort food meals for us. So. Give this one a try. I think your family will like it. It's easy, quick, and filling. And so that is what we had for dinner on this night. I'm going to show you how I put together chicken salad. The chicken is all shredded up. This is one chicken breast I had left over 
from a meal that I had made earlier in the week. You use some real mayonnaise. That is the key, real mayonnaise. You also are going to put in some onion. We're going to throw in a little bit of chopped grapes. And we're going to add in some pickle. And then you use a lot of pepper. Black pepper is a good key here. And some salt. Look at this 1970s, I don't know, maybe 80s pickle container. I love this. My mother-in-law gave this to me years and years and years ago. Isn't that lots of fun? Anyhow, chicken salad, it's a very versatile recipe. Everybody kind of has their own, but this is how I put mine together. It's always refreshing. We enjoy having it around the house, and it's a great way to use up leftover chicken. Hi, everyone. I have just finished putting together the batter for these blueberry muffins. It comes from one of my favorite cookbooks, The Best of Mennonite Fellowship Meals. My husband bought me this cookbook years ago. Um, in Ship Shawana, Indiana, and um, I used several of the recipes in it. And this one is my hands down favorite. It's called The Best Blueberry Muffins, and that it is. This was the first time I ever made homemade blueberry muffins was by this recipe, and it is to die for. Anybody that ever eats them says it's the best they've ever had. And so I will link the recipe below. I'm getting ready to fill up my muffin uh, liners here and put these big fat plump blueberries on the top just for some extra goodness and I'll show you these when they come out of the oven and again recipes linked below. Well my kitchen smells absolutely amazing right now with these delicious blueberry muffins just pulled out of the oven. I've sprinkled a little white granulated sugar on the top and is anyone like me I just always go back and forth with underfilling or overfilling. So the first pan I could have put a little more batter in there. The second pan, I did put a little bit more, so now I have some that are bigger than the others, but that's okay. They're all gonna taste delicious. If you delicious. wanna make your family super happy this weekend, stir together a batch of these blueberry muffins. And as always, thanks for watching.